the biggest drama in which I ever played a humble part was being staged on the grand scale, and villainy was already beginning to know that the final hour of reckoning was at hand. Maskelyne and his gang created the illusion of an army gathering to the south. Dummies of all sorts were planted there. Tanks, guns, aircraft, men, steel helmets, even a dummy pipeline of flattened fuel cans. They duplicated the army that Montgomery had in decoys so convincingly that the Germans actually put their main force opposing the decoys instead of opposing the real army. But Maskelyne had not finished yet. He helped to mastermind the operation's key deception, codenamed Butram. By means of a simple transposition, a real force of 150,000 men and thousands of tanks and guns would be moved in view of the enemy forces. By October the 6th, three weeks before the battle, genuine tanks along with dummies and sunshields were concentrated to the south. The Germans get used to seeing this or that, what they call furniture of the battlefield, and think nothing of it. Then, on the nights of October the 18th and 19th, the British concentration of men and equipment switched from south to north. They would move tanks with their engine muzzles, creep forward, and get under these hulls so when the Germans saw what appeared to be trucks, they couldn't see the tanks under them. The Germans had no idea of any troop movements. Simultaneously, the tanks that had left the south were substituted with dummies made by Maskelyne's gang. Late in the night on October the 23rd, Montgomery's 8th Army finally attacked, as planned, in the north. Rommel was not only taken by total surprise by this enormous subterfuge, by these illusionists, but only had half of his force up there to contend. The Desert Fox had been outfoxed by the war illusionist. Rommel held off for two days, committing his reserve to the north when he finally realized he'd been snookered. But it was too late. The German line had been penetrated, the uh, British tanks were on the road, running along the coast. On November the 4th, the German and Italian lines gave way. Rommel's surviving forces, outnumbered, outgunned, and brilliantly outwitted, retreated to Libya a defeat partially engineered by a magician. The duel in the desert was over, and the British had their first victory in the war. On November the 11th, 1942, Winston Churchill praised the operation in North Africa, saying, by a marvellous system of camouflage, complete tactical surprise was achieved in the desert. The enemy suspected, indeed knew, that an attack was impending, but did not know how, when, or where he was to be assaulted. Jasper Meskelin had completed his last grand illusion in the desert. He provided that one extra bit of oomph uh, that turned a stalemate into a British victory. It was the first victory of the Brits over the Germans, and you can't underestimate that. This subterfuge was enormous benefit, saved probably thousands of lives. The battle for El Alamein was a tremendous physical and psychological victory for the British forces. But Maskelyne's work was not finished. 
Using war magic developed in North Africa, he used similar wizardry in 16 countries throughout the Middle East and Europe. It's my pleasure and privilege to introduce to you the one and only Jasper Master. You've got a lovely trick for a razor. In 1946, he returned to England and to his first love, performing. This is where we drop the chopper again. Isn't this exciting? I love doing it. I do really. To give you a little idea of how proud he was of his work during the war, he went to the army and got approval for his whole roadshow to be dressed in British Army uniform. And here is little Bernie in the gilded cage. And he toured the country very successfully with a good magic show, but variety started to go down as television became more popular and eventually Jasper had to retire. And he moved to Kenya, where he did a few shows. Though Maskelyne returned to the conventional stage, it did not end there. A conjurer to the end, Maskelyne began to write the final chapter of his life. But even in his autobiography, he seemed to hide many critical details behind a curtain of smoke and mirrors. I guess you could assume that being a magician, he respected the magician's code of ethics, and that is never to reveal a secret. But I think there was probably another dynamic at play, and that is, Maskelyne, being very, very intelligent, was not only a great illusion designer, but he was also a great PR man. And I think he recognized that, like Houdini before, the less he talked, the more other people would talk. And they did talk. Even his own son, the first masculine in four generations to distance himself from the family business, found it difficult to separate the facts from the fiction surrounding his father's life. He was his own best promoter, and my father was one of many hundreds, if not thousands, of clever men employed to do clever things in evasion and escape and camouflage. Maskelyne took the secrets behind his life and work to his grave. He died in Kenya in 1973 without ever revealing his war illusions. They remain a mystery today, classified as top secret by the Official Secrets Act and will not be made public until 2046. The secrecy surrounding Maskelyne's war magic leaves many to wonder how some of the effects were achieved. The illusion's underlying principles are unchanged since Maskelyne's day. The basic idea for his whirling spray, the device used to protect the Suez Canal from Luftwaffe attacks, is a trick that dates back over a hundred years. It is a method of camouflaging one surface against another and by creating a, a, a light field, he was able to dilate the eyes of the pilot and in doing so create what's called a black wash, basically making the Suez Canal become invisible. In California, magician Franz Harare demonstrates how to make a row of tanks disappear using the method of black art practiced by Jasper Maskelyne. Key to the illusion are two portals, each containing over 300 high-power aircraft landing lights. Where Maskelyne shot all of his lights straight up, I'll be shooting mine straight out at you. By using these light portals, you'll see how the simple manipulation of light can completely change an environment. The lights are first positioned facing the tanks, so they're easy to see. The 
then with a very simple move, more specifically, turning the lights around and shooting them at the audience, you'll see how very quickly your eyes dilate and you lose that sense of depth perception. All right, gentlemen, take your places and prepare to rotate the aircraft landing lights. In three, two, one, make the rotation. The area behind the portals becomes a black wash and the tanks appear to have vanished. For Jasper Maskelyne, the beauty of the illusion was always in the eye of the beholder. Whether it was a Nazi bombardier looking down from high above, a field commander tricked in the North African desert, or a fan watching his magic act. Whatever he did, and however he did it, the magician did it with style and with imagination. Nobody had an inkling of how, how critical his efforts were. He was a secret weapon, uh, if you want to call it that, for the British, and the Germans never really caught on. The CIA and intelligence people, they know about masculine, and they always worry about the other side will have one. As a performer myself, I understand that really what it's all for is entertainment. But Masculine took it to another level. Masculine actually applied his art form to save lives. And how do you put a value on that? That's real magic. <laughs>